All right, everybody, good afternoon. I know I'm a little late with this one. I was at the gym when this hit. A lot of news happens when I'm at the gym lately, it feels like. But uh, we got this update from many sources, Brady Henderson among them. I've got his uh, tweet up on screen here. And the obvious move has been obviously made. So, earlier today, the Seahawks announced they released nose tackle Brian Monet player that you may have forgotten exists because he didn't play a single snap in 2023 because he tore his ACL in December of 2022. There was a lot of discussion that he was going to be back for the start of the season. Then they were like, oh, well, he'll be back by like week seven. And then it was, oh, he'll be back uh, for the playoff push. And he never made it back. So it became pretty clear that the Seahawks and Brian Monet were going to be headed different ways uh, after the season. The only question was, would we be able to do it cleanly? In order to do it cleanly, he would have had to pass a physical. I guess he did, because according to all the sources, including Brady Henderson here, Seattle is saving $5.39 million and only taking on $500,000 in dead money, which was what was on the contract. So, obviously, he was able to pass his physical enough to where you were able to cut him cleanly. So, that's good news, obviously. He goes from a $5.89 million cap hit to a five hundred k cap hit. That is significant. And fortunately, we've been able to move off of this contract with minimal pain involved because five hundred k in dead money is basically nothing. That is so insignificant, it's not even funny. five hundred k that doesn't even pay for like a UDFA's rookie salary anymore. So we got out of it relatively pain-free, but... Brian Monet does kind of represent a mistake mistakes. He he represents the thinking of the former regime. And I know the former regime is also kind of the current regime because John Schneider is still here. But Brian Monet, either way, whoever you want to attribute the extension to, Pete Carroll or Brian uh, Pete Carroll or John Schneider, it just kind of represented this this philosophy of we just like this guy or we value our guys more than we would a better player from the outside because I remember this extension because it kind of came out of nowhere since we had another year of club control on him when we extended him because of some injuries he had suffered. We could have just tendered him for a one year minimum deal, but instead we decided uh, that that feels like it's going to be a little bit dirty so we're just going to extend him now because the only reason why the tender exists is because he keeps getting hurt. We don't want to punish him for that. So we're going to go ahead and extend him now. I kind of get that. But this is a run-stuffing nose tackle in Brian Monet. And honestly, even before the extension, I don't think he had done anything too special. He wasn't like Al Woods. He wasn't like even a Puna Ford. He wasn't a... Uh, <laughs> He, he, he wasn't one of these, uh, even Atba Rubin. Remember Atba Rubin? I didn't get that sense from Brian Monet. He was just kind of a guy who was out there. So I can understand maybe wanting to extend him and not sticking him with the tender. But a three-year deal worth eight figures based on what he was and what he was doing, remembering that the nose tackle position is devalued as heck in the modern NFL, that a run-stuffing nose tackle, like even decent ones, tend to play for vet min money. It just didn't really make much sense. We didn't have to do it. We didn't have to do it for that much. It didn't seem like the value was there. It was head-scratching at the time. And as time went on, it got worse and worse and worse. Uh, 2022, Monet had like one good game, I think. I think he had one good game, and then he tore his ACL. And I want to be very clear about something. I'm not junking this guy for tearing his ACL. That's not his fault. That's got nothing to do with him. And I'm not junking him because he didn't get back last year, because there's probably not a lot he could have done about that. And I'm sure by the end of the year, he could have come back, or at least I heavily suspect that by the end of the year, he could have come back, and we told him, uh, don't even bother, dude. Don't even bother. You're gone this offseason. Don't go out there and get hurt again. Don't end your career like this. Don't stick us with your final year cap hit like that. So we probably just shelved him. So I'm not dogging him for any of that, but... It, it was just, it was a bad, it was a bad decision. It was a decision that didn't need to be made, even if we did have to make it, even if we wanted to do right by him. 
That could have been just letting him go. Go sign with another team. We can find another run-stuffy nose tackle who will play for a lot less than, what was it, like three years, 12 million was the extension, I think. So it just kind of represented the short-sighted, um, erroneous, suboptimal thinking that the uh, former regime had with Carroll in control of personnel. So I'm, I'm glad that we're able to move on. I'm glad that it barely leaves a mark, and I'm glad that we were able to uh, do it without there being any kind of an injury settlement brought into the picture here. So that clears up another 5.4 milli. So that's most of what I wanted us to do in terms of clearing the roster. It's actually even a little bit more because I thought we were going to be stuck with Disley. But um, on over the cap, we're currently 12th in cap space. So we're in the top half of the league. We're not far away from the top 10. It's possible we could sneak into the top 10 with a couple more moves. I'm, I'm not even talking about the big ones that I want to do, like extending Geno Smith. We might be able to sneak in there with some smaller moves. You let Nick Ballor go, and you let D. Eskridge go. Between those two moves, you're creating another, like, over $4 million. Like, that plays. That's going to do something for you. $4 million is your practice squad, easily. $4 million is almost half of your rookie class. So, that matters. And I think it matters more than having a guy like Nick Ballor and D. Eskridge on your roster. So, shout out to Brian Monet. I'm not going to say it was all bad. He did have some moments. I can understand why the team wanted to keep him, but I think it was a mistake to give him all that money. I think it was a mistake to extend him for three years. I think it was a mistake to not take advantage of the uh, tender that you could have just slapped on him for, uh, I think it was, yeah, I think this extension was before the 2022 season, and we paid for it. We had to pay him a significant amount of money last year for to get nothing out of it that we didn't have to do. And obviously, again, it's not me hating on Monet because it's not his fault he got hurt. But that doesn't change the fact that this was a mistake. And I'm glad we're able to move off of it now and there's no more drama surrounding it. So, hey, books are getting nice and clean. I understand that there's going to be a good big old stack of dead money for 2024 now. And people are going to look at that and like go like, ugh. But it had to be done. This was necessary. And we're trying to do things differently here. We're trying to do things in a better way. We're trying to do things in a way that make more sense. And Monet didn't really fit. What we, even in the best case scenario, I don't think Monet would have fit what we were trying to do here very well. I think that um, just in general, the modern NFL is moving towards more athletic nose tackles. And you can have a big, girthy, trash can full of dirt in the middle, but not for six mil, not for a six million dollar cap hit. So it is what it is. All right, uh, more safety videos coming out later today. I just wanted to go ahead and jump in and talk about this for a few minutes because it is significant. Six million dollars matters, but uh, we are, well, it's going to be 5.4 in effect, but 5.4 million dollars matters. But uh, we're going to get back to the strong safety stuff, and then uh, tomorrow we will be moving on to other topics. All right, see you guys later. Go Hawks.